Good morning to you all and welcome back to the channel. We have something fun today. All right, so sit up on the brakes. So all of a sudden now your chest is high, right? Yeah. So now all your weight's up here, but you've also straightened your arms. So as you're starting to think about leading with your head, bending this elbow, I want you to leave this arm relatively kind of locked out. See, so yeah, and that's the rotation with the yeah. upper body that you're missing. That's what I'm, so I, it's I like- I blocked myself off just now. Exactly, like <laughs> you're, you're square on the grip, so your weight goes that way. And then what you're trying to do to drop your head is you bend your outside. So like all your weight just comes forward instead of actually come off laterally. So this part of my arm, cause you actually have to rotate from your shoulder and yeah. your outside arm a little bit. Um, right now, if you feel the tank, it's cause you're gonna go down that way. I actually feel it on this arm, on Dude. my left. But yeah, I don't, I... because you're actually moving your body to the left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm 50%. I kept noticing that while trying to do this, yep. that I was throttle. Okay. So think about like you're gonna come at it with your elbow a little bit lower. So think about you're gonna come with your hand a little bit lower, rotate forward so it's just the tip of your finger starting to get in there. And then that way when you're on it, you're almost having to like pull the throttle forward to be able to get towards that brake gotcha. lever. Then when you get to the less, it's like you're not moving quite as much. Like the butt stays a little bit paused, the weight stays in your inside hand, and then the head stays a little bit high, and that's why you're just struggling. Really, I think the majority of it's just coming from your body position, right? Bike runs wide for one of three reasons. Off brakes too early, brakes run, you yeah. know, a, a decent long time. Um, into the throttle too abruptly, or it extends, or body's too high. Like. The rest of it was good. It's just the body's high. The bike's not getting the signal to steer off into some of those left-handers. So, you know, we kind of went, you know, 180 degrees on the, the rights. <laughs> and now, now that's the stronger side. But, I mean, it, it'll go that way. Still pretty quick on the, the, the final. Like, you're building it pretty good. And then we're giving it up fairly quickly. And, again, like, turn five, it's such a long corner. Mm -hmm. And the slowest point's really going to be somewhere up in this area. So it's like we're done with the brakes back here. We have, we could literally break twice the distance. So it's just gonna be a lighter pressure, longer distance to let that thing really carry further up into the corner. <laughs> a little wide, but. And then I think here too, no? One of those I touched. Maybe it was out. I thought that's where, it, when it was behind you, it looked like it, it touched there. Well, maybe. In it may have been in seven. Seventeen, yeah. Yeah, left side's crossed up now. As soon as you get the weight out of the hand, though, it, like your body goes right to where it is. It's just you're tipping in with with just the weight in the handlebars instead of yeah. leading with the upper body. So when I came here for my one-on-one -on -one with Chris Paris, the R7 was one of the bikes I actually really wanted to test out because. Uh, it's it's kind of the thing people are really interested in it. So I want to see what it was like and well We came out to Indy Motorsports Ranch to test it out. I'm not a huge fan of it <laughs> You know it does everything Okay, and Chris actually kind of explained it as a really quick commuting bike something that's kind of quick fun But it's really not gonna wow you in any way But it's you know if you're a newer rider on a track, it's really not that intimidating So there's some pluses depending on your skill level as you go up, you're gonna find that it's kind of gutless, needs a little bit more oomph. The brakes are good, but not great. It leans in pretty good. That's like kind of its parting pieces. It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's where I leave it and I don't really look back at it after I get off. Now, I was kind of hesitant to jump on an R6. One, I've never ridden one. And two, I just, I don't know, wasn't too uh, keen on it, but this is a 2018 and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> the power that that doesn't have, this does. Granted, it's what, above 10 grand, 10,000 to 14,000 RPM. It's, it's very happy and I had to find that out the hard way. You'll see that I was in fourth gear doing absolutely nothing and it was gutless. Well, it helps when you put in the power band. Went from the big bikes, now we gotta go to these because I gotta get my knee on the ground somehow. 
So if I'm on the ground already, well, there I am. Especially being put on the spot. Oh, grade, man. huh? Grade, like a, 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 FF minus. No, it's kind of like, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, did awesome, man. Getting getting his knee down for the first time. That was really cool. Uh, he was very excited about it. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, made big progress on, on breaks. I think the data kind of let some things jump out, and make a little bit more sense in your mind, and then really, I think getting on some of the minis. Like it just took it like, oh, this is what I thought grip was. Okay, it's really somewhere up here, <laughs> you know? So I think just kind of going through that process and seeing that a lot of light bulb moments. So I'm gonna give you an A. It was an aha moment for sure. All the, those mini bikes dragging the knee for the first time. I was like, <laughs> yeah, ex overexcited is probably an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir. Awesome, brother. So much fun. Fun to have you out, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we finished a, an incredible day of training with Chris Paris. Let me tell you, it was some of the best one-on-one -on -one training you've ever experienced. Is it expensive? Sure, <laughs> it is, but I tell you what, it is absolutely worth it. The amount of feel you get from riding with someone coaching you directly one-on-one, -on -one, and then the telemetry. He wanted to know if I wanted to ride the R6, and I was against it, sort of, because I just wasn't really interested in the bike, but he's like, he's got telemetry in it. Me being an engineer, kind of a nerd, I was like, you know what, screw it. And I tell you what, seeing your inputs and everything in a line, it really, really helps you understand what you're doing on the track. What a time. I am beat. It was a blast. You're gonna see some great, great drone stuff that Toad FPV got. Uh, can't wait. This video was so much fun. This whole experience is fun. If any of you are looking to actually you know, push your skills a little bit further, I highly recommend checking out one-on-one -on -one training, especially out here in Indy with Chris Paris. Definitely worth it. With that, you all have a good one. I'm out.